الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, Welcome to the Friday حلقة at Abu Hurairah Center and I hope uh, everyone is keeping well and staying safe um, We have been taking a thematic journey through the Quran and we reached Surah Yusuf and uh, we had two halaqas on Surah Yusuf, and uh, we've come to the point where Yusuf is to be uh, put in prison. The Again, the central theme of Surah Yusuf is, it's a message to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the early Muslims, and obviously in subsequent Muslims. Uh, there is a reminder there, uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, there is a, the story, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam runs through the whole surah and there is so many lessons. Uh, there is reassurance to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There is a reminder that prophets go through what you've been through. Uh, there are a lot of wisdoms and themes in the surah and surah Yusuf in terms of dealing with Al-Qadr, especially difficult circumstances. So it, was, it, came very, it came in very timely for Prophet Muhammad and the companions because they were going through a lot in, uh, in Mecca. And uh, as we go through the surah, inshallah, we will try to reveal some of those lessons. So we reached the verse uh, number 35 where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi wa rajim. ثم بدأ لهم من بعد ما رأوا الآيات لا يسجننه حتى حين and then uh, they decided after they looked at the whole situation and the whole thing that happened again with Yusuf عليه السلام the wife of Al Aziz the other women everything they thought it's better you know to accuse Yusuf put him put him in prison so rumors which were actually true around the wife of Al Aziz and other women do not spread further and do not gain uh, you know, substance. So Yusuf Islam was put in prison and he made the dua. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before going to prison uh, uh, that Allah removes away all this plotting of women and all this fitna and this temptation. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really saved him from that by even putting him in prison, which for me, for, generally speaking, it's a, it's a negative experience. It's a painful experience. Yet there is an answer of da'a. There's, there's protection. So things in life don't take up a meaning by themselves. They, sh they should not be seen as a singular event. They should be seen within the context. Specifically, what is the final outcome of all of this? So this is why Allah allows unpleasant, painful things to happen in this world because they are part of a bigger context and eventually they are going to transpire uh, in a good way. So Yusuf alayhi salam is put in prison. Allah says, وَدَخَلَ مَعْهُ السِّجْنَ فَتَيَانْ قَالَ أَحَدُهُمَا إِنِّي أَرَانِي أَعْصِرُ خَمْرًا وَقَالَ الْآخَرُ إِنِّي أَرَانِي أَحْمِرُ فَوْقَ رَأْسِي خُبْزًا تَأْكُلُ الطَّيْرُ مِنْهِ نَبِّئْنَا بِتَأْوِيلِهِ إِنَّا نَرَاكَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So there are two prisoners who entered the prison with him. And um, one of them, they approached Yusuf salam. One of them said that I saw myself serving, uh, or I saw myself making wine. The other one said, I saw myself holding bread over my head and birds are eating from it. Then they asked Yusuf salam to interpret their dreams for them. And they explained why they approached Yusuf salam. They said, Inna naraka min al-muhsineen we see you one of the good people like we see you are you're good you're exceptional and this shows subhanallah that the goodness that was in yusuf alayhi salam projected out it showed on his face as abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu uh, anhuma i believe said inna lil hasanati nuran fil qalbi wa diyaan fil wajhi that for the good deed there is light in the heart and brightness in the face وَإِنَّ لِلْمَعْصِيَةِ لَظُلْمَةً فِي الْقَلْبِ قَلْبِ وَوَحْشَةً عَلَى الْوَجْهِ And for the sin, there is darkness in the heart and there is like a negative uh, sort of uh, 
uh, flavor or, or that, that shows on the face due to the sin. Uh, <clears throat> so they, they saw that Yusuf alayhi salam, there's something so special, so good about him. So they trusted him and they, they trusted his knowledge. He started responding to them. And he says here, قَالَ لَا يَأْتِيكُمَا طَعَامٌ تُرْزَقَانِهِ إِلَّا نَبَّأْتُكُمْ بِتَوْوِيرِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمَا There will be no food or provision that comes to you except that I will tell you something about it before it comes in. He was speaking about his gift, the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, the capacity. He says, this is from what my Lord told me. Now, what can we learn from this? We learn from this that it's okay for someone to mention the good things or the skills that they have. Some people feel, you know, it's inappropriate or it's a bit, a bit boastful to talk about oneself and to talk about skills. Now, if it's true, it doesn't have to be bad. And if there is a need, there is utility, it can be utilized, there's practical, uh, you know, implications for talking about one's, one's sins and making them known, then there's no harm with this, especially if the person wants to do something good through that. But if the person wants to boast only, or the person is saying something that's not true about themselves, they're claiming something that is not true, then it becomes haram. Uh, then Yusuf alayhi salam attributes whatever he knows back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's how it should be done. Because everything that is good that we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should always refer it back to Allah. Then he gets to a point because Yusuf, you know, Yusuf alayhi is seeing that these two people are trusting him and they are seeking his interpretation for their dreams. It's a very beautiful occasion for him and they are receptive. They are trusting. So he tells them about Allah and he says, he said, I, I turned away. I, 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 I removed myself from a religion, a path, a way of life that does not believe in Allah, does not worship Allah alone, and does not believe in the hereafter, in the next life. And I followed the path, the religion of my forefathers, my Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub. It's not permissible for us to associate partners with Allah. This is from the blessings of Allah upon us and upon all of humanity. But most humans are ungrateful. They're not thankful. This beautiful blessing of Allah, the guidance, the truth. That is first put inside of us in the form of a fitrah and then awakened and enhanced through revelation. You know, most people are ungrateful and being grateful to that is by following it, but denying it is ungratefulness. Then he says, Ya sahibay sijin. Or like mates, or prison mates, or uh, all my... Uh, friends or my uh, my buddies like prison buddies right uh, it's, it's a very beautiful way of addressing them and, and it shows this connection this personal bond are many gods who are separate to be worshipped is that better than one Worshipping the one, the only one true God who's dominant over all the universe and the creation. Then he addresses them directly. He says, He says, what you guys worship, these are names and titles that you and your forefathers gave to these objects that you worship. And Allah did not give permission for that. Judgment truly belongs to Allah. His command, his judgment is that you worship only him, none but himself. That is the straight uh, religion, the upright religion, the correct way of life, but most people do not 
No. Now here people do not know, it doesn't necessarily mean ignorance, that people just completely oblivious to the truth, but it also refers to something, uh, because this happens a few times in the Quran, Allah refers to the fact that people do not search for the truth, or when they see the truth at a distance, they turn away from it, and that's why they don't know. So it's not always like inevitable or innocent lack of knowledge, but many times it's actually lack of intention or an intention to the opposite. Then he uh, starts interpreting their dreams. So he says, Ya sahibi amma ahadukuma fayasqi rabbahu khamra. Uh, oh my um, friends, my uh, uh, prison buddies, one of you, and he doesn't specify, one of you will be a waiter. It will serve alcohol to your uh, master, your master will be influential, a very big person, and the other will be crucified, and birds would eat, like prey birds would eat from his head. He did not specify. Then, and he says, You know, the issue that you're asking about has been decided. It's been the qudya here from qada. Qada means that a judgment has been passed and it's been in the sense that it's been you know executed and fulfilled why because this is the knowledge of yusuf alayhi salam allah gave him this knowledge so from the dreams he knew what was going to happen it's not like it's likely no this is going to happen emphatically for sure then yusuf alayhi salam approaches the person that he believes will be saved and will become a waiter, like will serve wine. He says to him, mention me to your master. And he shows subhanAllah, Yusuf alayhi salam in the prison, although he's accepting of Allah's qadr, he's content with Allah's qadr, he's patient with these circumstances, yet he tries everything he can without any attachment to the outcome, without being consumed like, oh, I need to get out of prison, etc. No, no, it's not about this. This is the condition that Allah put me in. I accept it and I deal with it. And it doesn't mean I, I accept it that I decide to stay here forever. No. Now, whatever happened in the past up until this moment, I accept. Now, from now on is a new story. I engage with active, proactive, you know, actions and efforts to get out of here without, you know, attachment to the outcome, without being so like frustrated with my present condition. This is the balance. So this is what Yusuf alayhi salam, we can see this, we can, we can sort of get this from, from the way he was, he was behaving and he was speaking. So he says to that person, mention me, mention this story, mention everything you know about me to your master. And but he forgot to say, by the permission of Allah, inshallah. And thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused that person to forget. Allah caused that person to forget. And Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, remained in the prison for years, for a number of years. So it was a long time that he spent in prison. Then years later, the king sees a dream, king of Egypt. So he sees a dream as seven fat cows being eaten by seven skinny cows and seven green uh, ears of uh, grain and seven are not and other seven ears of grain you know one set of seven grains that are that's green and the other set is dry so the king feels there is something about this dream there's something true about there's a message in this dream so he seeks interpretation but you know the assistants the people around him they say oh it's adghath ahlam. these are just random you know dreams thoughts meaningless don't worry about them but then now this waiter remembers he remembers Yusuf alayhi salam and the whole story and how the interpretation of Yusuf alayhi salam came out to be true. So he says, you know, send me to Yusuf. I'll get you the interpretation of the dream. He goes to Yusuf in prison. Yusuf alayhi salam, so he tells him, he narrates the dream to Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf says, Yusuf alayhi salam does not only interpret the dream, but also gives a prescription, a strategy uh, for as to how to handle, you know, the situation that the dream describes. So Yusuf says, He says, 
you know, plant, grow grains, uh, produce, etc., for seven years consistently. فما حصلتم فذروه في سبله whatever you harvest leave it in its like the grain leave it in its ears except for the little that you eat and be very economical in in what you eat. ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك سبع شداد يأكل ما قدمتم لهن إلا قليلا مما تحصنون. Then there will be there will come seven years of drought, extreme drought. That would eat everything that you stored, ex almost everything that you stored, except for the little that you managed to keep. So it will leave little for you, just only if you, you know, work on the first seven years properly. Then after that, there will be a year of ease and rain and abundance. Now this person goes and tells the king and the this captivates the king and he sees the wisdom and the knowledge and the strategy. So he says, get me this man. Yusuf alayhi salam refuses to leave the prison. He says, let your master question and ask and inquire about, you know, those ladies that I was accused of messing with. So I was accused, I was convicted. Let him find out the reality of the matter. So the king checks out with the ladies and with the wife of Al-Aziz and eventually the truth gets exposed. The wife of Al-Aziz confesses that it was her fault. It was uh, her problem. And Yusuf salam is cleared. Now the king, he's brought to the king. King speaks to him. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ أُتُونِي بِهِ أَسْتَخْلِصُ لِنَفْسِي فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ So the king said, bring him. This is mine. This person is mine. He's my share. When he spoke with him, he admired him further. And he said, you are among us. You are a person of authority. You're one of us. And I mean, you are trusted. We trust you. Yusuf salam spoke. And he's another proactive approach from Yusuf salam. He says, He said, appoint me to be responsible for the treasury, for the ministry of finance. Let me, because I am someone I am, I'm very good with calculations, numbers, planning, strategy. Uh, oh, sorry, Hafid, I'm trustworthy uh, and I'm very good with numbers. Alim, I know how to handle these things. Honesty and knowledge, character and know how, expertise. Uh, and Allah SWT says, and thus we have given Yusuf السلام, authority on the land and he can reach wherever he wants with authority. Now the first seven years pass, seven years of drought start, Egyptians are ready because of the plan of Yusuf السلام. Other countries are in pain, are, are, are all in a state of lack, uh, starvation. They're not prepared for that. So Egypt is so well prepared that they even have a surplus that they can trade off, they can sell to people from other countries. So the family of Yusuf, the brothers of Yusuf came, were sent by their father to come. They brought some of their personal stuff, their goods, and they wanted to sell them and uh, or trade them off for some grain and some food. And that's what people, started flooding to Egypt to do that. Yusuf salam was in charge of this kind of distribution and this kind of trade-off. So he saw his brothers. They came to Yusuf, they entered upon him because they have to deal with him. He's the officer that they have to deal with. He recognized them. They did not recognize him. They did not recognize him. Why? Because for them, Yusuf was dead. This is a, like mental bias, cognitive bias. The mind cancels the possibility. So this is why, although probably subconsciously they, they, they noticed something, but it did not occur to them that this was Yusuf alayhi salam, because for them, Yusuf, you know, was gone. That's it. Probably dead or in a faraway country. 
then Yusuf alayhi salam prepared, like took their, whatever their, uh, the goodies they came to, uh, to, to exchange or to trade off. And he loaded the camels with their grains and their food, etc. Uh, and then he says to them that I see, according to the records, there's one of your brothers missing. So if you come next year, bring him with you, because I want to make sure the records are right. Uh, these details are, by the way, in some of the books of Tafsir and the stories of the Quran. So, uh, and if you don't bring him, then I will not give you, I will not trade off with you next year. They said, okay, we'll speak with his father and see if he gives us permission. Yusuf alayhi salam, seeing from the kind, he's aware now of the situation in other countries, poverty stricken, starvation, uh, People are selling their own things in order to, uh, you know, get food in exchange. And he could see from the stuff that his brothers brought that this, these were the personal things, the necessary things. So he was concerned they might not have something to come and trade off next year. So he told his servants to put these goodies back in the caravan, back in the camels of his own brothers. And at the time as well, people would travel. They not necessarily would, would watch over their camels because this is a huge caravan. And it's just like traveling today. You, you, you take your luggage, you check in at the airport, and you don't know what happens to your luggage throughout the flight. Even if you have connections, it's been transferred, etc. You only get it when you arrive, you just pick up your luggage. Pretty much similar system at the time. They would uh, only know about their luggage you know, once they arrived. Uh, once they arrived back in Palestine. Uh, okay, so they go back and they tell the story to their dad and they, 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 they tell him, you know, we'll need to get our brother next time. You have to give, uh, let him come with us. And he said, am I going to trust you with, with him just as I trusted you with his brother before? He still has not for, forgotten. He is actually, actually still grie grief, griefing. Um, and... Uh, then he says, but I'll put my trust in Allah. He's the one who preserves and he's the most merciful. But then when they checked, checked their luggage, they realized it's not, it's not only the food that is there, but also their goodies. So they said to their father, you know, we have, we've been given back our goodies. So most likely we'll be able to go next time or next year to get, uh, you know, our, our uh, provisions, more provisions. So the father says to them, I will not send him with you until you give me promises. Emphasized, confirmed promises. And Allah is the witness over these promises that you will not, uh, you will bring back your brother with you unless it becomes a desperate situation and you, you are unable to bring him. So that's what they did. And then their father told them, you know, when you enter the city, that city there, don't enter altogether disperse, scatter each one by yourself and enter. So there are issues here. Uh, he understood that something has been set up. He could read that. So he didn't know exactly what, what that was. So for the safety, safety of his own children, his own sons, this was a tactic. So when they spread, it's difficult to, you know, watch them by one or two people and they would not be noticed. And some scholars said, because generally speaking, the family of Yaqub were very beautiful, handsome. So he said, if you enter all together, all of you together with these handsome faces, it's going to draw a lot of attention. It's going to be problematic. Some scholars say, said it's all about al-hasad and evil eye. Again, these are just interpretations. And then... Um, They go to Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam takes his brother to the side and speaks with him and he reveals his identity. He says, Inni ana akhuka, fala tabta isbi ma kanu ya'malun. I'm your brother. Do not, you know, feel bad about what they used to do. Do not, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll handle that. Then Yusuf alayhi salam had a plan. So his plan was to, um, when he prepared their provisions, there is the measuring cup because they used to, they used to measure 
things with it, you know, the, the amount instead of weight. Um, so Yusuf alayhi salam instructed his servants or his uh, workers, his staff, to put his own cup, the main cup, which is a royal cup, in the luggage of his own brother, Benjamin, the youngest. The caravan set out on the way back to Palestine. An announcement was made, loud voice. You people of this caravan, you are thieves. You stole the, uh, you know, the, the measuring cup or the golden cup of the king. They said, we, you know, we're not thieves. You know, we're not, we're not people of corruption and we're not thieves. So the, the, say, let's say the officer who was investigating, he said, okay, what is then the punishment? If we find it, we're going to search your luggage. If we find it in your luggage, on the luggage of any of you, what would be the punishment? Now here, why did they offer them this? Because this was courtesy, because Egypt has it, had its own laws and Palestine had its own laws. So they would offer strangers uh, to be judged according to their own, uh, the, the law of their local land out there. Um, so they said, what is the ruling of a thief in, in your land? Because in the rule of Egypt, uh, the, the, the punishment for theft, such a theft, like stealing from the king or from the authorities, was, puni was punished by capital punishment or severe punishment, capital punishment. Uh, so Yusuf al -Islam obviously did not want this. He so he wanted the law of Palestine. What was the law of Palestine? That the thief, if he is caught, he would serve the person that he stole from, either for a period, period of time or for whatever. Uh, so they said, قالوا, uh, فَمَا جَزَاءُهُ إِن كُنْتُمْ كَاذِبِينَ you know, what is the punishment for a thief if you are guys are not telling the truth, if you are not telling the truth? He said, whoever is found in, in it, it's found in, in his luggage, then he's taken as a servant by the king. And this is the punishment of those who do wrong. So the search started by Yusuf or his staff, it started they searched the luggage of the brothers first before Benjamin, and they left Benjamin till the end, just not to, uh, you know, uh, allow any suspicion to arise. Um, and thus now, then they found it in the luggage of Benjamin. Yusuf alayhi salam says, okay, then what is the ruling? This guy, your younger brother stays with me. He has to serve me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we gave Yusuf alayhi salam knowledge. We gave Yusuf alayhi salam knowledge. His brother said, now if he steals, then he had a brother who stole before. Look at the bitterness they still have about Yusuf alayhi salam. They are, basically what they are referring to is that they claim that Yusuf alayhi salam stole the heart of his own father then. Although they were the ones who wronged Yusuf alayhi salam, but they were always projecting that on him. Even until now, Yusuf kept it to himself and he did not, you know, ha have an issue with them. And he says, Allah knows the truth. And this shows that a believer, generally speaking, even when there are lies or rumors or, or you know, things that are not true, that a person should not be taken completely by the fact that people are accepting them. Although this is something that has to be dealt with, but should always be firm knowing that the truth only matters. Only the truth matters because that's what really matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The truth has its own intrinsic power. So they said to Yusuf alayhi salam, you know, he has an old father, his father is concerned for him. So take one of them, one, one of us instead of him. He said, no, it's injustice. The thief, whoever we found, whoever, uh, the person that we found this cup in, in his luggage, that's the person that we're going to take. We're not going to you know, shift it to someone else. This would be injustice. So when the brothers of Yusuf became desperate, they realized they could not get their brother back. 
the either the oldest or the most wise among them, he said, don't you know that your father, you know, had an agreement with you? There's an agreement. There's a covenant. There's an oath. I'm not going to go back and previously remember what you did to Yusuf. And it shows that this brother, he seems to be the wisest among them, was not fully in line with their earlier crime. But again, sometimes the spirit of the group uh, becomes overwhelming. So he says, I'm going to stay here. You guys go back home and I will not go back home until my father allows me to come back. Or oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passes a judgment or gives him a judgment, a special judgment in my case. Go back to your dad, tell him exactly what happened. Tell him your son was found to be a thief, was, was caught stealing. And that's what we, we are saying, what we saw, what we, what we witnessed. And you can, and we did not know the unseen. Now, we, when we gave you a promise, we did not know that your son was going to steal or caught stealing, was, was going to be caught stealing. And, and, and you can ask the people of Egypt, if you want, go to Egypt and ask, or you ask the caravan that we came along with. Their father said, no, you guys have a plot. You guys already plotted for something. Then he says, I will hold on to beautiful patience. For sabr and jameel. This time he says, Asallahu an yatiyani bihim jamia. I hope Allah will bring all of them back. Imagine Yaqub alayhi salam, he's a prophet and he, he remembers the dream of Yusuf alayhi salam. It has not been fulfilled. So he knows there is hope that Yusuf alayhi salam would come back to him. So he was hoping that this would be the moment. So he said, Asallahu an yatiyani bihim jamia. Hopefully Allah will bring all of them back to me. Innahu huwa al-alim al-hakim. Allah is the most, Allah is the all-knowing and the most wise. And he turned away and he cried more on Yusuf alayhi salam to the, to the point that his eyes turned white out of extreme sadness and weeping. And this is, by the way, not a form of despair or a depression or losing balance. On the contrary, this is the love of a father. His heart is content with whatever Allah writes, but his, his fatherly connection to his son makes him emotional. And that's it. That's it. So there's no, there's no imbalance here. He's not someone who's insisting on suffering or playing a victim. On the contrary, he's just being a father. And he's not showing this sadness you know, he, he's not displaying, he's keeping it between himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and then they make a comment, you still, you know, remember and mention Yusuf alayhi salam until you sort of, you know, burn yourself out. And, you know, until you cause yourself to die. He says to them, Innama ashku bathi wa huzni in Allah wa a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamu. He said, I am expressing my sadness, my fatherly loss. I'm expressing that to Allah, not to you. And I know from Allah what you don't know. I know about Allah what you don't know. And I have news from Allah which you do not have. You guys don't know. You think you know. You think you're being smart. And you don't know what I know, what I'm aware of. And he says, يَا بَنِي يَذْهَبُوا فَتَحَسَّسُوا مِنْ يُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ He says, oh my children, my, my sons, um, he says, go and um, look for news about Yusuf alayhi salam, about Yusuf and his brother, and do not ever, don't ever give up on Allah. Don't give up hope. You know, when it comes to dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because no one despairs of Allah's mercy but people who don't truly believe. As long as you believe there is trust, there is hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So subhanAllah, profound lessons in this surah. And we're going to stop here, inshallah, and we will uh, finish then next Friday, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. So jazakumullah khair for joining us uh, this week. And again, uh, stay safe and take care of yourself. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.